But the rest of the world's attention was dominated this week by the Olympics. They ended tonight and they provided some incredible moments from the athletes, but also some controversy from the fact that the Games were even happening in the first place in the middle of a pandemic to a decision taken before they began regarding one of the teams involved. In other Olympic news this morning, Russia is competing under a new name at these Olympics following their doping scandal. They'll be competing as the Russian Olympic Committee. The Russian name, flag and anthem have all been banned if athletes do win any medals. Yeah, though the Russian name isn't really banned if they're competing as the Russian Olympic Committee, is it? It's like saying a monster like Harvey Weinstein has absolutely no affiliation with the Weinstein Company. I don't know about that. The name there really does imply otherwise. This new designation is due to the fact that Russia was technically banned for operating a years-long state-sponsored doping scheme. And this isn't the first time they've been sanctioned. In Pyeongchang in 2018, Russian athletes had to compete under this neutral banner instead of their flag. But before Tokyo, the punishment was downgraded and they were allowed to compete as the Russian Olympic Committee with uniforms that clearly bear more than a passing resemblance to the Russian flag. We all know what is going on there, in the same way that calling this a red plumber Halloween costume isn't fooling anyone. And while winning Russian athletes didn't get to hear their national anthem on the medal stand, they did get this. Yeah. They got Tchaikovsky. That is more Russian than the Russian national anthem. In fact, there is no sound more quintessentially Russian aside from maybe an old man weeping uncontrollably while eating a potato. If anything, it seems Russia embraced the ROC designation during these games, with the official at Russia Twitter account even running a campaign using the hashtag we will rock you. And you don't get to use rock as a fun, sassy name. That was supposed to be your punishment. It's like if Hannibal Lecter started tweeting, hashtag muzzle me daddy. No, you eat people. You don't get to reclaim the muzzle. The thing is, these designations were put in place for a reason. But that reason is not something the ROC has been eager to acknowledge. After a US swimmer initially suggested his race was probably not clean, the ROC, whose athlete had won that race, responded aggressively. The Russian Olympic Committee have responded via a strongly worded statement on Twitter, which says, in part, how unnerving our victories are for some. Yes, we are here at the Olympics, absolutely right, whether people like it or not. Wow, that is a hard pushback. And the ROC was very much not done, calling the complaints English language propaganda, oozing verbal sweat in the Tokyo heat, which is undeniably poetic. Oozing verbal sweat in the Tokyo heat. Sounds less like Russian tough talk and more like a line from A Streetcar Named Desire 2, Blanche Goes East. It's pretty clear that making Russia compete under the supposedly neutral flag and uniforms when neither the flag nor the uniforms were neutral means that this punishment wasn't really a punishment at all. So let's try and learn from this. And next time this problem arises, let's make sure banned countries have a much clearer asterisk on their participation. So instead of an obviously flagged themed tracksuit, let's put them in a Shrek themed sweatshirt paired with shit emoji slippers and a lobster hat. Something like this. See? Now that is a neutral look right there. Good luck guessing what nation that athlete's competing for from that outfit. And when their athletes win gold, don't give them something that inspires national pride like Tchaikovsky. Instead, play something awful that is guaranteed to stick in your head and remind you that something objectionable has happened. May I suggest this? Now, I know that's harsh, but let's agree it is the ultimate deterrent. Mm -hmm.